worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just give him a big end of praise to the King of Kings and glorify his name. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Master. We glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. Praise on him, Jesus. Praise on him, Jesus. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated in the presence of the living God. Praise God. God is good. God is good. And all the time. Praise God. It's wonderful to see what God is doing in our lives. And wonderful, more importantly, to see you be here in the presence of the living God. The Bible says it is in him we live and move and have our being. If you are visiting us for the very first time, I'm sure you have been welcomed. Yes. want to thank God that you are here today. You could have chosen to go anywhere else. The weather today is very wintry and I think you could have just decided to stay home. But I thank God so much that the same spirit that led you to be here in this weather knows exactly what you need. And he's going to meet you at the point of your need. Somebody shout amen. amen. Praise God. And I want to thank once again on behalf of the Moyos and the Spanders. What has already been echoed here. Your help and your support. Your care and your prayers is more important to us. I'm very bad at receiving things. When the message went out with my account details. I was very, very sharp at her. <laughs> Forgive her. Because I'm not good at receiving. I'm good at giving out. Because I just believe it's something that was... Uh, taught me when I was growing but I want to say that because I want to thank you so much because you overdid yourselves thank you for all the love gifts one of my desires when my mom was passing away I said to you you are guaranteed you won't be buried the same way my father was buried but you, some of you don't know how my father did. I always say to people sometimes I believe God prepares you by not preparing you so that when tragedy strikes again, you are prepared by a God who did not prepare you before. When my father died, I was 16. I had, uh, was there, I just finished my diploma in Bible school. And at 17, I was in South Africa. I know how my father raised us up, 10 of us. It was difficult. And I vowed to God, my first love offering that will come from the church, I will first preach in. That whole offering, I'm going to go and buy my father a suit. And I did that. I went to the shops after I was given my love offering. Coming back, using the buses, the public transport, the radio was turned on. And they're talking about a landmine. That blasted in Zimbabwe. And the man has not been named. Because the next of kin. Some of them have not been told. All of us in the bus there. We are shaking our heads. Like you are doing. What a tragedy. Little did I know. That was my father. They were talking about. Now I wanted to see the paradox. And the enigma of me. Holding the suit happy to go and give my father as my tithe for raising me up. Sometimes God prepares you by not preparing you so that when the second tragedy strikes, you are prepared. I was flown back my very first time to get in an aeroplane. God has got amazing ways. It was to go and bury my father. By the time I arrived in the village, not knowing that was my father because the host I was staying with did not tell me that was your father. He said to me, you need to go back home because your father is sick. I don't know whether that's a cultural or African way. We don't sort of just come straight to you and say, hey, your mother is dead. We don't do that. We have a ways of telling you without telling you. So by the time I arrived at home in the village, I am now shocked by cars and buses and everybody's there and I'm thinking, what's going on here? By the time I arrived at the gate, I'm met by my uncle. They hold my hands and I'm thinking, what's going on here? By the time I arrived, I couldn't even see my father because 
it was all pieces of flesh. When a landmine strikes, it was intestines here, it was a hand here, it was a leg here. I want you to see that picture. Yes, I know. Gross as it is. That was my father. That was the goodbye of my father. My initiation into ministry. And you know, I had a choice, right? God, done. I don't love you anymore. I don't care about you. Forget about ministry. You have a choice. Even in the moments of grief. My brother Edward was telling me about a similar episode. A wife died and the man did not know what to do. He goes back home. It's now an empty shell. He drank poison and killed himself. How you handle grief is important. So he said, Brother Chidi, when we were, when he came home and he shared a verse. And he said, David was crying for his son when he was sick. When he was told, your son is dead. He rose up, took a bath, cleaned himself. And there's a principle there. Because with grief, there are other secondary variables. That if you don't handle it well, you invite unwanted guests in your life. And you can never resurrect again. I leave up to you to interpret what that means. When do you rise up to take a bath after you have lost something valuable? For some weeks, for some months, for some years. And that's fine. No judgment there. But for goodness sake, take a bath and move on. I'm more blessed because both of my parents, they taught me all what you see here, my father was my first hero, taught me to pray, taught me to fast, taught me to study the Bible. My mother was an equal heroine. All what you see today in ministry, she taught me and she raised me up that way. She's in glory and she's watching us from above. So Destiny, thank you so much for being a family. Uh, when you're away from home, when we cannot travel, we're watching it on Facebook Live from our village with the internet that is breaking but we're watching <laughs> and therefore we felt that we were there even though it's not the same but that's what it is because if you cannot change it if you cannot prevent it you work around it yeah. and we thank God for that so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much once again for your prayers let's just give God a big hand of praise once again and appreciate it in Jesus mighty name and thank you, my beloved sister Nikki. That was a very powerful, powerful, powerful message of communion there. Very true picture and example. Worship team, I want to thank you for your help. And thank you so much for holding us out together as we continue to praise God, brother Prince and sister Enonge, in Jesus' name. My friend is here this morning. He's a man that I've grown to love. I emulate and I look at his life. We pray together on Saturday mornings and uh, we've just grown to love his spirit. And I want to thank God so much that is here today. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give God a big hand of praise as welcome right now to the pulpit, Brother Chidi, as he comes to give us the word of God, Jesus. Wow. Wow. I actually just feel like closing the service and then we go home. Because my sister, Nikki, what's your name? That was awesome. I mean, you spoke to every one of us. You spoke to me. I don't know about others. Let me personalize it. Yeah? That was deep. And, and there's a teaching grace upon your life. Yeah, uh, you've been sitting on it, sitting on it, not wanting to do anything. But you know what God is bringing you out? Yeah, there's a serious, strong teaching grace upon your life. <laughs> and you have to break out of timidity completely. You have no choice now. You got to break out of it. Yeah. Got to break out of it. <laughs> you know, um, God always releases grace upon our lives, every one of us. But you know what? You must utilize grace. If grace is dormant, it doesn't increase. And I will tell you what I mean. 
because Peter says to us he's the best person to talk to us about grace of God because he struggled with Jesus Peter was impulsive first to chop off somebody's ear first to say to Jesus oh I'm going full on with you and then suddenly a maid shows up Peter was afraid and denied Jesus three times but when Peter became sober and understood the grace of God upon his life and how to utilize it he said something very striking to every one of us he says to us therefore grow in grace there's a growth in grace Nikki there's a growth in grace yesterday's grace is useless there's a growth in grace there's a new grace that comes upon us on a daily basis utilize that grace come on now <laughs> utilize that grace and I see the grace of God upon many lives here but you need to use it well utilize it come on now <laughs> I'm excited to be here really excited really thank God for um, your pastors Pastor George and sister, um, Pastor Charlene you know it is a pleasure and a privilege for me to be speaking to you yeah and I'm glad to be here I'll just do a bit of introduction of myself and then we pray and then we get into the message. Yeah, my name is Chidi like you've heard. And I have the, the most unique name on the face of the earth. And I will tell you why my name is unique. It's a simple name of five letters. C-H-I-D-I. Let me tell you the uniqueness of my name. When I meet someone who is an atheist, I'm always very happy. You know why? Ask me why. Because the meaning of my name simply says there is God. So when an atheist calls my name, he's saying there is God. That's unique. And then when I meet Australians, particularly young kids, I was, I was, I was teaching soccer. I used to live in Singapore for eight years. From Singapore, we moved to Israel another eight years. I was teaching soccer in Singapore, which I'm going to talk about later during my message. And we were living in this condominium that had so many blocks. Of course, you all know that Singapore is a concrete jungle. Everyone lives high rise. And I was teaching soccer and there were a few young Aussie blokes there where I was teaching soccer. And they said to me, hey, what's your name? I said, Chidi. And they all went Chidi Chidi Bang Bang. <laughs> so Aussies call me Chidi Chidi Bang Bang. Asians call me Chili, Chili Paddy. <laughs> okay so I spent time in Singapore working um, with the government in des designing policies and all the rest but I was also pastoring a church because I discovered that through the ministry of Paul you can have a profession and then you can also have a vocation did you hear me you can have a profession and also a vocation so Paul vocationally was a tent maker. In those days, you didn't need visas per se to get into some nations or countries, but you needed to get into some countries not as a missionary, but as a vocational worker. So Paul entered into places like, you know, Turkey as a vocational tent maker, Rome and all the rest. So I was there doing that for eight years and then I had the opportunity of um, um, speaking somewhere and the Israeli ambassador to Singapore was there and so loved the way I spoke. And then he said to me, there's an opening in Israel. Would you want to do that? Do the job? And I went off to Israel with my family, spent eight years there. Beautiful place. Can you imagine every day having to drive from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? That was beautiful. I saw the Bible come alive. And every time I drove through different cities in Israel, like Beersheba, like Rehovot, the Jews, by the way, don't have B in their alphabet. B is V. So pardon me when you hear me say Beersheba, Beersheba. Or Rehovot. Rehovot is Rehovot. Yeah? So, and, and so the scriptures always came alive. Came alive. Jumped at me. Every time I went there. Boy, what an experience. How many have been to Israel here? Oh, awesome. I saw the chauffeur. You took me back to Israel. 
with a beautiful chauffeur. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, you know, so it was an experience that is timeless for me. Then I decided, my wife decided that she wanted to come to Australia. I'm doing an introduction of myself. Sorry, it's taking too long. But from there, you get something, yeah? Um, my wife decided she wanted to come to uh, Australia to do some further academic program. And I said to her, go ahead. You come. But I have to keep working because we need money to pay your school fees. <laughs> and so I stayed back in Israel. So for three and a half years, I was shuttling between Tel Aviv and Perth four times in a year. I'm sure you've never heard this before. Four times in a year and he was taking his toll on me, taking his toll on family, taking his toll on everybody. And then 2018, I decided enough was enough. Even though it was sad and painful to leave Israel, then I moved down to Perth. When I was coming to Perth, the Holy Spirit said to me, I've taken you through Singapore to the Middle East and I'm bringing you back to the ends of the earth. <laughs> The ends of the earth and i love that you know why i love that can i tell you i've started my message but we're still going to pray okay the reason why i love the ends of the earth the disciples came to jesus in acts of the apostles right they were very micro they were very metropolitan in their thinking they were so parochial in their thinking very parochial very narrow-minded and they said to Jesus will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel and Jesus I perceive myself to them shut up guys break out of your parochial mentality break out of your metropolitan mentality break out of your narrow-mindedness the gospel is not just for Judah and Jerusalem and Samaria it is going to go beyond these regions and go to the uttermost part of the earth, the ends of the earth so Jesus was already thinking of Fiji, thinking of Vanuatu, Solomon Islands New Zealand and Australia in Acts of the Apostles and the Holy Spirit said to me, that's why I brought you here ends of the earth the city of light <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you missed an opportunity to give glory to God. Never miss moments. Don't ever miss moments in your life. Come on. There are moments I call moments of epiphany. Where you suddenly make a discovery. Don't miss it. Never miss it. My epiphany moment came when I said to God, I'm going to down to Australia. Hallelujah. And I said to the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be part of those that will activate the prophetic word the young Portuguese Spanish explorer spoke about in the 16th century when they looked over Australia and declared it the Southland of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me. We have waited over 400 years for that prophecy to come to pass and God is saying, I am waiting for you. I am waiting for you to activate that prophecy. Now listen to me. When God spoke to Abraham, he said to him, your people will be in captivity for 400 years and then when they got to Egypt after 400 years they were sleeping they were sleeping on their lease nobody rose up to pray but in the 430th year some guys rose up and said enough is enough it is time to go back to Zion and then as they began to pray God showed up and delivered them listen the prophecy is over 400 years over Australia but we're still dancing around it we're still singing around it it is time to rise up and activate that prophetic word that was spoken many years ago it is time. Wow. It, is time. it is time. And that's why I'm here. Yes, sir. It is time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I'm excited with your team for the year. Each one. Rich one. And the title of my message today is Reach Out. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. For you alone are God. There is none like you. Blessed be your name. Lord, as I speak this morning briefly to your people, 
I pray for clarity of speech not in enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of your Holy Spirit and of your power that we would not live here the same way we came that our lives be transformed that our hearts be renewed that we go out there and become great ambassadors for the kingdom and become instruments of righteousness to be used to deliver families and communities and cities in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise in Jesus' or mighty name. Amen. 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 You know, when um, Pastor Josh took the microphone, the first thing he talked about was about he likes to reach out to people. And I said, preach it, brother. That's the title of my message. I loved it. Israel, strategically, has got four seas. The Sea of Galilee, the Mediterranean Sea, that runs the whole of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is beautiful. It's a cross between New York and Miami. New York without the beach, Miami with the beach. All combined together in Tel Aviv. Beautiful place. So we have a saying in Israel. There are three P's in Israel. Three P's. The letter P. Three P's. So there are three major cities in Israel. One is Haifa in the north. And the borders with Lebanon and Syria. Beautiful place with Mount Carmel and all the rest. Now most of the industries in Israel are found in Haifa. And the biggest seaport in Israel is in Haifa. So we say three P's in Israel. People who work in Haifa, they receive good salaries and good wages. So we say Haifa pays, P-A-Y-S, pay good money. And then Tel Aviv, we say Tel Aviv plays, P-L-A-Y-S. Because everyone is on the beach early in the morning, <laughs> enjoying their lives. And then we say Jerusalem prays, because they're praying 24 hours in the city of Jerusalem. I'm serious. I'm sure you went to the Western Wall. People are praying there two, four, seven, three hundred and sixty-five, sixty-six days in a year, and they are coming from all over the world. So Israel has four seas: the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea on the borders of Egypt and Israel, and then the Dead Sea or the Sea of Salt, like it's called in the Bible. Yeah, and then one more sea. The Sea of Galilee. So four of them. Four. But you know what? The Dead Sea or the Sea of Salt only takes in water from Galilee Sea, takes in water from the River Jordan, but doesn't give out. Doesn't reach out. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to drop the mic soon. I don't preach for too long. Yeah? So the Dead Sea takes in water from River Jordan, takes in water from the Sea of Galilee. But nothing exists in the Dead Sea. I mean, there is no aquatic life. Not a fingerling would you find of a fish. Nothing. The only thing that lives in the Dead Sea is alkaline, salt. And when you get into the Dead Sea, you can't sink. Everyone floats. I'm serious. You went there. You all float. You can't sink. Even if you don't know how to swim, you can't sink in the Dead Sea. You float because of the level of alkaline in the Dead Sea. But the Dead Sea doesn't give out water. That's why it is called the Dead Sea. And I've seen the sea Reduce and recede in size in my eight years living there. Every day is drying up and drying up and drying up. What am I talking about? Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be the Dead Sea. Reach out. Tell your neighbor, reach out. We got to reach out. We need to reach out. You know what the Western society is doing to us? Through what I call secular humanism. We're losing our community spirit. 
We're losing it. The community spirit, we're losing it. One of the words I love so much in Australia is the word mate. Hey, mate. Hi, mate. I love it. And a lot of people don't know how it came about. The word mate came about when the first people arrived here from, from Britain, from the United Kingdom. And, and, and I don't want to use that word, I'm sorry, so that I don't get into trouble. You know what I mean, yeah? Sometimes you got to be socially correct. But in the house of God, we have to be biblically correct. <laughs> yeah? So when they came in here, and people were put in prisons and jail, the language then was, myth, are you okay? Are you alive? Have you eaten? So the word mate stuck in Australia. That's why everybody says mate. Mate, you see a young kid is your mate. But somehow we just mouth and say mate. The truth is, are we really mates? Is there mateship? Are we reaching out? Are we reaching out? I moved to my street. I used to, we used to live in Canningville, and then we moved to Harrisdale. The day I stepped my foot on my street, I said to God, I take ownership of this street. And I'm going to reach out. Even if the people living on the streets don't want to reach out, I'm going to reach out. Guess what I did? I started playing soccer in a small park on my street. And the kids started showing up from their homes, one after the other, to play soccer with me. And the next thing, parents started showing up. And I started reaching out to them, one after the other. Are you listening to me? To reach out, take this. You need to be very intentional. Each one, reach one. We need to be what? Intentional. Break out of your comfort zone. That neighbor might be a bit stuck up. In England, he says someone is stuck up. You know, he doesn't want to see your face. He doesn't want to talk to you. Yeah? That neighbor on the left, on the right, on your street, you have never ever spoken to. God is saying to you, when you get back home this week, right? Be intentional. Find a way to reach out to that neighbor. that everywhere I have been all over the world I always find a unique selling point to reach out to people what is your unique selling point I'm sure we all have we all have there is something on the inside of you that is useful as dead as the dead sea is listen billions of dollars comes into Israel through the Dead Sea because of the Dead Sea products. So it's, it's totally not useless. It's still useful. You might be here, you're saying to yourself, oh, look at me. I can't even communicate. I can't talk to people. You know, I, I, I can't look at people in the eyes. God is saying you can't look down on yourself because he's put something on the inside of you. It is called the spirit of God. There is something God has put on the inside of you. It is called the favor of God. When you go to that neighbor and knock on his door or her door and say, neighbor, I am here to see you because of the favor of God upon your life. She opens her door. He opens her door and says to you, come in. What have you come for? And you're saying to him, I've just come to visit you. There's something on the inside of you. As dead as the Dead Sea is, it is still useful. Reach out. Your deliverance is tied to you reaching out. Your restoration is tied to you reaching out. Your redemption is tied to you reaching out. Reach out. No man is an island. And so, I came to bed with all my resume. In my mindset, I was saying government. I'm going to get a good job in the government. Because I've always worked with governments. Get a job with the government. And I tried all I did. It didn't work out. And the Holy Spirit reminded me one day, reach out. 
start going into the schools. I started by volunteering in a primary school not too far from here, Groveland's Primary School. I would give up my time every week, teaching young people, mentoring them, talking to them, you know, about leadership, about civics, about discipline, because sometimes I worry for the future of Australia. With our young people, we're treating them with kid gloves, Nambi Pambi, Wishy Washy. We're treating them with kid gloves. I treat them with tough love because I worry for the future of this nation. By the way, you know, wherever I live, I become a citizen. <laughs> so, reaching out to the primary school, and one day God said to me, move it to the higher school. And I met, I walked down to a, a higher school, and I said I wanted to see the principal. What for? Who are you? I just want to reach out to the principal. I have some things I can volunteer in the school. So I went to this principal and I said, to, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And I started a one year of voluntary work in the high school. I'm serious. At that time, I had no job. I was still feeding on my savings from Israel. And he was going down, receding like the Dead Sea. <laughs> and so, one day the principal comes to me and says, Chidi, you've done so well for us. We're seeing the kids you're mentoring being transformed and being changed. There's an opening. Would you like to work in the school? I got a job without putting a CV or writing a letter of appli application. Wow. And I started a job. Are you listening to me? That's what God can do if you reach out. It's time to reach out. So I reached out, started work in the school. By the way, my school has one of the largest concentration of indigenous kids in the whole of um, Metro Path, Metropolitan Path. Highest indigenous number. And then I felt that, you know, my color is not so different from you. Yeah. It's easy to reach out, but it wasn't easy yeah. reaching out. Yeah. But I persisted. Man of God, I persisted. I kept plowing. You got to go back to that neighbor again and say to that neighbor, you know what? I, I, you might be, you know, exhausted with seeing my face, but you know what? I come today with a smiling face. And after some time, that neighbor is going to crack. You have to be intentional. Tell your neighbor, be intentional. Be intentional. Be, intentional. be deliberate. So, the school organized an aquatic carnival where the entire school had to go to a place in Kalamunda where they have this aquatic center. The whole school. And then suddenly after about one hour, I saw some of the African kids and the indigenous kids, they had formed a circle and they were all singing. They were doing rap, rap music. And I love rap. <laughs> so I went in there, I stood like an observer. I was watching them rap and suddenly it became a contest. So you rap, if you do better, you move to the next level. And then the other person is knocked out. Yeah? And they were doing that and continued, and then suddenly one of the Caucasian kids says to me, Mister, can you rap for us? Oh, I said, unique selling point. <laughs> <laughs> to reach out to the indigenous kids. And I went, basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they do it. Just like I'm the king of the microphone, say Dr. J and Moses Malone. And I did, I did all the effects. <laughs> Guess what happened? Listen. All the indigenous kids are my friends today because of rap music. What is it God has put on the inside of you? Use it to reach out. Reach out. But be intentional. Be deliberate. Second thing is, you need an agenda. I told them at the men's meeting, set an agenda for your street, for your community, 
for your family. Set an agenda. And I will tell you what I mean. I've explained this to, um, to you, to pastor. You know, the other guys, you know what I mean, in the other side of the kingdom. Yeah, I don't want to mention, but you know what I mean. Wherever they go, they always have an agenda. Yes. I will mention two places, you will know what I mean. Go to Punch Bowl in Sydney or Locomba. Gone. I will mention 10 cities in Europe because I've traveled across the globe. Marseille in France, gone. Utrecht in Holland, gone. Bradford, Luton, Preston, East London, gone. Malmo in Sweden, gone. Berlin in Germany, gone. Because some guys have an agenda to gentrify. In politics, we call it to gentrify. When you gentrify a place, it means you're changing the culture and the DNA of a place. I start a business on the street. I bring my younger brother. He starts a business next door. And my younger brother brings a youngest brother. He starts a business next door. And we're buying up all the properties. That's an agenda. The church runs with a vision. But not with an agenda. It is time for us to mix vision with agenda. You know why? A vision can take a thousand years to accomplish. But an agenda is now. We need to be deliberate. We need to be intentional. But we must have an agenda. As soon as I moved to my street in Harrisdale, I set the tone. I set an agenda on my street. Yes. <laughs> it is time to do what? To reach out. But you got to be deliberate. Now, you guys might be wondering, oh, he's come to preach to us. He didn't open the Bible. Blah, 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 blah. What is he talking about? Now, let's go to the Bible and I'm rounding up now. <laughs> yeah, go with me. You know, we were born out of due season. Preachers are born out of due season. Yeah? You know, sometimes as a preacher, you come, you've prepared so much. And God says, I'm changing the agenda. You have no choice. What do you do? You submit. <laughs> yes, sir. Because he is my commanding officer. I respect and obey. But let's get into the word quickly. Just one scripture and then I'll explain some things. You got to reach out. If your theme for the year is to reach out, it does not depend on the programs of the church. You set an agenda for yourself. You set a program for that office where you work. Set an agenda for your community. Find those unique selling points in your communities that you can use to reach out. I teach soccer with my work in school. I still teach soccer Tuesday, Thursday in the community. And we're seeing the lives of young kids change. When we used to live in Canningville, I found out if a lot of families were going to play soccer Sunday morning instead of going to church. I rallied them together. I said to them, I can teach your kids soccer Sunday evening provided you can go to church Sunday morning. Guess what happened? Mentality shifted. They all started going to church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, come to Ramford Primary School. You will see me teaching soccer from 3.45 p.m. today. Set an agenda. Soccer is my unique selling point in reaching out to people. What's your unique selling point? Mm -hmm. Set an agenda. Be deliberate. Be intentional. Okay. Be intentional. Oh, I hope I've not broken it. Yeah, maybe God is saying buy a bigger one. <laughs> shalom, shalom, shalom. <laughs> Let's quickly look at the scripture in Proverbs and I will round up. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's see where we are. And let's see how this relates with the Dead Sea. Proverbs chapter 11. Maybe we can have it on the screen. Let me read from the screen. Whatever version you have is okay with me. 
We're reading from verse 22, 23, 24. Set on a tender. Yeah, it says, as a ring of gold in a swine's snarl, snout or snarl, whatever. English is not my father's language. <laughs> so he's a lovely woman who lacks discretion. But that's the truth. You know, sometimes people come and say to me, oh, I can't talk to that person because they're laughing at my accent. Uh -huh. They're laughing at my accent. I mean, people come to me. Oh, Chidi, I can't speak here. I can't talk here because my accent is not so good. Hello? Hello? Hello. Go to England, where English originated from. The guy in London speaks Cockney. And the boy in Liverpool speaks Scouse. He's a Scouser. And the boy in Manchester speaks Mancon. The boy in Newcastle speaks Geody. The boy in Birmingham speaks Bromi. So the boy from London goes to Liverpool. He doesn't understand the English the boy in Liverpool is speaking. <laughs> All you need to do is open your ears wide. You will hear what I'm saying. Open your ears wide. <laughs> so don't say that anymore. Proverbs 11. <laughs> That's why. Okay. Now let's go to the next verse. As we, as we tie up this whole thing now. The next verse. Inonge. Thank you so much Inonge. God bless you. The desire of the righteous is only good. But the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Next one. There is one who scatters. Did you see that? There is one who scatters. Who reaches out to the neighbor on the left. On the right. Down the street. Reaches out in the community. It says, yet increases more. The more you reach out, the more you increase. And it says, there is one who holds back. You're holding back. You're saying to yourself. I can't go and see him or her because she's stuck up. She won't speak to me. No. Next one says, but it leads what? To poverty. Let's look at the next one. 25. It says, the generous soul will be made rich. I love the original version. It says, will be made fat. And he who waters also shall be watered himself. You know, every time I'm coming back from work, the kids on my street are already back from school and they're all playing in the park. And I'm singing, I'm laughing in my car as I'm driving back home. The moment they see my car coming, chidi, 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 chidi. Every one of them, they're greeting and, and, and exchanging pleasantries with me. You know why? I'm always smiling. All that your neighbor needs is just for you to break the ice with a smile. But sometimes Christians carry grumpy faces. Grumpy faces. The book of Proverbs says, laughter is like medicine to the heart. Your smile could bring deliverance and healing to someone around you. Smile more. The whole world is not collapsing around you. Smile. Laugh. Be joyous. Give out. In that bus, as you come into that bus in the morning, smile at the person sitting in the bus. You get into that train, smile. Come to Harrisdale, the shop, Stockland. All the shoppers know me. Because when I come in, I'm singing. I'm singing. I'm singing. I don't care who is looking at me. I'm singing. I've all become friends with them. Sometimes I get freebies because I'm singing. <laughs> Reach out. Love it. Be deliberate. Be intentional. But set an agenda. And then you will see Proverbs 11, 23, 24, 25 begin to happen in your life. And then you stop being a dead sea. Rise up to your feet. Come on now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Reach out. It's time to reach out. Don't depend on the agenda of the church. Have a personal agenda to reach out to people. Let's increase this place. I'm looking at the overflow. 
The basketball court needs to be filled up with people. There are people dying in the community through depression and oppression. They need us to reach out to them. Let's begin to reach out. Lift up your hands to heaven. Come on, lift up your hands. The Bible says men ought to pray, lifting up holy hands. Say, Father. Come on, say after me. Say, Father. Say, in the name of Jesus. Say by your power, by your power, by your spirit, by your spirit, by your message, by your mercy. I call upon you. I call upon from you. today. From today, help me, help me to reach out, to reach out to people, to people around me, around in the name of Jesus. In the name Lift of up Jesus. your voices and begin to pray. Say, Father, help me, help me to reach out to people. Lord, help me to reach out to people. Around me, Lord, give me the spirit, Lord, the grace, the heart, the heart to reach out to people. Lord Jesus, she cut on the libre day, man cut on the carionia, he cut on the Christmas, the sea cut on the ever. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just one more prayer, one more prayer point. I'm done. We're gonna pray. Sometimes people are resistant. They're resistant to you even coming close to them. I remember trying to preach to someone in London on the streets of Oxford. And the guy did like this. Buck her off. Don't come near me. He didn't want to hear the gospel. So we're going to pray now. Say, Father. After, say after me. Say, Father. Say, in the name of Jesus. I call upon your name. From today. Everyone, Everyone that I reach out to, that I reach out to, you will break, will break the resistance, the resistance in their hearts, in their hearts, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Lift Jesus. up your voices and begin to pray. Father, break the resistance, break the resistance, Lord, break the resistance. We break it, Lord. Yes, Lord, group resistance, individual resistance. We break it, Lord. Community resistance, we break in the name of Jesus. In my office, in my place of work, in the shopping malls, in the bus, in the trains, in my street, wherever I go, in my neighborhood, break the, the resistance of your heart. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And so, Father, we thank you for today. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your word. Yes, Lord that has really provoked and challenged us to the next level. We ask for grace, the grace to reach out. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Come on now. Yes, sir. It's a time to preach Jesus. It's a time to reach out to
begin to praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, servant of God. Thank you for allowing God to use you today. I got a, a sense in my heart that before we go, there are people here that are saying, I am the one that you're talking about. Sometimes I've got a just shame-faced face. I can't look people in their eyes or I can't talk to my neighbor. I believe God wants to break that from you. I believe there are people here that are saying, yes, I think I know what my niche is, but how do I start? We want to break that. The things of the spirit, they work that way. We want to make sure that we break whatever, whether it's a negative thinking, irrational thinking, whatever it is that has stopped you to lift your full potential. Today you are saying to God, the treasure that is in me must be communicated somehow. To my neighbor, to my friends, at school, at work. If you're here and you're saying that today, that yes, it begins with me reaching out to those that do not know Jesus Christ. And you want prayer? I'm going to ask the man of God, Pastor Chidi is going to pray together with you. And just lay hands on you. Just break that spirit. Just break it off from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I believe that the season is now and the Lord is calling forth for his warriors in these end times that to be able to be and to do that which God has called them to be. Somebody shout, I am the one. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach so out. So if you believe right now that that's what you want us to pray for you about, you go and reach out to other young girls, other young boys, want to reach out to other families, reach out to other singles, reach out even to those people that are within your circle. In Jesus' mighty name, if you want just that boldness, that confidence, that anointing that comes from the Holy Spirit to destroy yokes of bondage and to build up networks for the kingdom of God, please just come for right now and we're going to pray together with you. And the man of God is going to lay hands upon you, break that barrier this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, guys. God bless you as you come. 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 I am the one. I want to be bold enough. I want to proclaim Jesus where I am, where I am. Look around here. What God is doing in my influence, the circle of my influence. I want to be able to be that a voice in that area. I want to become a force to be reckoned with in that area. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Men of God, over to you. I'm going to pray for us collectively for those of us who just stepped out of the front. You know how these door-to-door -door people who sell things come and knock on your door with boldness and audacity of faith. You know, hoping that you're going to buy something from them. Yeah, that's how we ought to be. <laughs> or those guys who are looking for charity donation, they come knock on your door every time. And then you open the door, you give money to them. Sometimes, yeah? Lift up your hands towards heaven. It's not rocket science, yeah? I want you to pray and say, Father, give me boldness. Pray to yourself, come on. Ask for boldness and an audacity of faith. Ask for boldness and audacity of faith, audacity of hope. Without being confrontational, give me wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Find a niche area, like Pastor said. There is a niche area. There is a unique thing on, on the inside of you that can reach out to people. And it has nothing to do with your age. Moses was reaching out at the age of 80. You can reach out to your circle of influence. Or your sphere of influence. Ask for boldness. We need boldness. I release the spirit of boldness right now upon everyone standing here. I release the spirit, the boldness that was upon Ruth, the boldness that was upon Esther, that she stood before the king and found favor. I declare some boldness upon your life that as you stand before men, you will find favor in the name of Jesus. Father, we break the spirit of intimidation. We break the spirit of being shy. We break the spirit of fear. We declare boldness in the name of Jesus. Go forth in that newness of boldness and do exploits and reach out because the hand of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for everyone here. Receive receive his grace receive his grace receive that mantle to reach out to people and God will put words in your mouth 
the Bible says he will give you a mouth and a wisdom that no man is able to resist it or to gain say speak forth that the grace of God is upon you from today and he will fill your mouth with wisdom and with words that are accurate, incisive and penetrative give you all the praise in Jesus of mighty name Amen and Amen you believe it faith in Jesus mighty name yes. Once again, give God a big end of God, a praise to him, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Declare it with me. I am bold, I am bold to reach out, to reach out. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. Give God another big end of praise in Jesus' mighty name.